Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video on the comparison of some intermolecular forces. Um, we've done hydrogen bonding in class recently. We also talked about uh, Van der Waals force. Um, so we are going to do a comparison of these guys. Okay, um, dipole dipole or uh, molecular polarity. We've covered it in another video, but as a refresher, it happens when you have difference in electronegativities within the molecule. Now, we know chlorine from experience has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, so we expect chlorine to have a partially, yes, partially negative charge, and we expect hydrogen to have a partially positive charge. Now, these two different charges represent the poles, and two meaning di, you got your dipoles right there, okay? And chlorine again over here in this different molecule being negative and positive, okay? These different charges right here are able to attract, okay? So that's dipole, dipole interaction. is very, very important, okay, in terms of um, our lives because um, without dipole, dipole interaction, we probably would not be alive. Okay, so there's other implications uh, rather than just like learning, okay, this is a positive and negative charge and that's it. It does have life implications. Um, we talked also about non-polar covalent bonds. Non-polar covalent bonds have an even sharing or even distribution of the charge cloud. Okay, so neither guy is winning the tug of war. <clears throat> so the charge is evenly distributed. Okay, and we also talked about molecular... Um, molecular polarity in terms of if the molecule is sym symmetrical the molecule will be non-polar okay so we have to once again go back to those videos if we have to and make sure we understand in, in terms of our symmetries how does a molecule how is a molecule symmetrical and how is a molecule asymmetrical okay um hydrogen bonding once again is a is a unique type of dipole dipole and we'll tackle that on the next slide but before i move on <clears throat> i just want to state that um ionic bonding right we don't talk about van der waals or dipole dipole <clears throat> or hydrogen bonding with ionic bonding all these guys right here are between molecules and involve some type of um covalent bonding okay ionic bonding there's total transfer of the electrons Okay, so we have to be careful with that. We have to be able to recognize um, covalent bonds from ionic bonds. And remember, that, that goes back to chemistry 1, but it pops up again in chemistry 2. We have a test coming up soon, and if you cannot recognize ionic bonds from covalent bonds, life is going to be miserable. Okay, hydrogen bonding. Um, we stated, as we stated already, hydrogen bonding arises when you have hydrogen hydrogen in contact with either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, okay? Now what quickly happens is we have hydrogen with one proton and one electron in this electron cloud, right? A strong, um, highly electronegative element, like one of these guys right here, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, is able to pull away this cloud partially, right? And cause the proton to be exposed okay so that's why it's unique the the element has to be small and have a very strong electronegativity and f o and n fluorine oxygen nitrogen uh fit those requirements so it's unique to these three guys and nothing else so for classic example um uh, we're using a water molecule now our oxygen is here and our hydrogen is here okay now what's happening is <clears throat> the pull is going in this direction because we know oxygen has a higher electronegativity um the proton in hydrogen gets partially exposed okay so this partially exposed proton in hydrogen is able to interact now with the partial negative charge of oxygen along with these um unshared pair of electrons so there's all this negative she's charged over here are able to interact with this partially exposed proton and the partially positive of the hydrogen. So we have um, an increased attraction, if you will, in addition to the dipole-dipole. Okay, we have an increased attraction of the partially exposed proton with negative, and that's called 
hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is found in um, our DNA in terms of holding the amino acid together. Um, hydrogen bonding, if it weren't for hydrogen bonding, okay, water would have a lot of different properties and we probably will not be alive. Okay, so hydrogen bonding is very important. Once again, the partially, pro the partially exposed proton is able to attract with any negatives around it, okay, and uh, is, it, it, it causes certain properties, which we'll discuss in a second. Okay, one of the things we talked about in class in terms of properties of hydrogen bonding um, was the increase in the melting and the boiling point of the substances. All right, so we have this, this graph right here that we went over, and let's look at just the red line. Okay, we had CE, we have SE, we have S. Okay, now all these guys are in group 16, right? So if we follow the progression, our O should be somewhere around here because we're looking at the mass of TE, right? As it gets less as we go to SC, it gets S as we go to S, okay, H2S, all right? So H2O should be somewhere down here if we extrapolate it. But what happens, we notice is that water, from experience, we know boils at 100 degrees C, right? And that's due primarily to hydrogen bonding. That exposed proton causes it, is able to attract to other negatives, okay? So um, water has unusually high boiling point if you compare it to things that are um, in this particular group. That pattern follows along also with something like hydrogen iodide, okay? And hydrogen bromide and hydrogen chloride. If we compare HF with those guys, you know, I is in group 17, BR is in group 17, CL is in group 17, right? Now the progression, once again, is I is heavier, BR is a bit less heavier, CL is a bit less heavier. And we see the progression as the mass decreases, the boiling point also decreases. So we expect F to be somewhere down here if we extrapolate again. But once again, HF is all the way up here. Why? Because of hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen bonding in in water is much more extensive than the hydrogen bonding in HF, so that's why water has a higher uh, boiling point. Okay, so that's melting point and boiling point increasing significantly when the substance has hydrogen bonding. Van der Waals force. All right, Van der Waals force I think is listed as um, a type of London dispersion force in your textbooks, but I'm panic with that. In terms of the regions, they specifically say Van der Waals force. Okay, so we'll go with that. And we're discussing the fact that this is what holds non-polar molecules together. Okay. Now you might ask, it might seem kind of weird at first, right? Because you, if something's non-polar, it doesn't have any charge, how does it get to attract to something else? But what happens in van der Waals force of attraction, we have temporary dipoles being created, okay? And how are these temporary dipoles being created? We, as we discussed in class, there is a shift in the electron cloud, okay? So when the electron cloud shifts, there's more of a concentration of one charge, in this case negative on one side and positive on the other side. It's temporary, but it's important because when you have millions and millions and millions of these um, atoms together jostling each other, bumping each other in the shifting of the cloud, these charges are able to, a word, they're able to attract to each other. Okay, Van der Waals attraction um, has properties that go with it. It also can be a bit extensive, but it's much, much, much weaker than dipole-dipole, and it's much, much, much weaker than hydrogen bonding. Okay, so um, that's Van der Waals force of attraction caused by a shift in the um, cloud of the atoms. All right, and this, well, once again, this is what holds nonpolar molecules together. All right, moving on. In terms of Van der Waals attraction, there are t two main things that go hand in hand that affect it, and that is size of the um, of the atom, or, or mass size of the ma or mass or size of the atom, and okay, also the number of electrons. If the atom is larger, most likely it's going to have a larger mass, and most likely it would have a uh, much more electrons. So let's look at some guys over here. Now, we know from experience, HE, NE, and these guys are in group 18. They're noble gases. Uh, we know noble gases are very, very, very stable. Okay, they don't want to really react with anything else. 
and um, so we expect them to be nonpolar. These noble gases here going this way are increasing in mass, right? We have helium with a very low mass right there, and we have uh, radon over here with a much higher mass. Now, we'll notice what happens in terms of the boiling point. We notice that the boiling point increases. Why is that? The higher the mass, the increased VDW, the increased Van der Waals force of attraction. So once again, you have to remember this, folks. As your number of electrons goes up, as your mass goes up, the Van der Waals attraction will increase. So you would notice in, in an increase in things like boiling point. You would all notice an increase in, in things like in terms of phases. For example, if you have um, the gas phase, all right, that'll be a, a lower Van der Waals force of attraction. If it's a little higher, it will go to the liquid phase. And if it's higher, it will go to the solid phase. For example, we see this pattern in group 17 with the diatomic um, halides. For example, fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid and I2 iodine is a solid. They're all nonpolar. But the reason why iodine is a solid is that it's a higher Van der Waals attraction. Once again, we have to remember that Van der Waals attraction is what holds non-polar, okay, NP, non-polar molecules together, okay? Alrighty. To wrap up, hydrogen bonding in terms of strength would be this guy right here, okay? Compared to dipole-dipole would be this guy right here. Van der Waals force of attraction, VDW, this guy right here, will be this guy right here in terms of strength comparison. Van der Waals attraction, even though very, 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 very weak, is also very important, so we can't dismiss it. All right, it holds nonpolar molecules together, and its implications in terms of biochemistry and all and, and different things. Okay, dipole dipole interaction also very important. Okay, now notice uh, once again hydrogen bonds over here works for H with F. O or N, FON, that's our memory device, okay? Please, guys, you have to be able to recognize each of them, okay? If you have to, so once again, you have to go back and remember, is the molecule nonpolar? Is the molecule polar? Okay, so there's certain properties then that go with it. If it's a polar molecule, can, does it follow hydrogen bonding or does it, is it just regular dipole-dipole? Or, you know, from, and from there. Okay, so once again, please know how to recognize, okay, the molecules in terms of polarity and also remember their properties. Okay, so once again, as always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. This is a short video on the comparison of these guys. The Van der Waals force of attraction is extremely weak. Okay, the dipole dipole is the strongest of these three intermolecular attraction. I, I mean, hydrogen bonding is is the strongest in terms of these um intermolecular attractions, and dipole dipole is in between. Okay, I hope this video was a help. Uh, see you guys soon, and take care.